This episode is about how core values affect all of your relationships. So Glenn and I are going to get into this. It's going to be a good one, man. We're going to talk about all of it, how core values affect friendships, how they affect romantic relationships, marriages, partnerships, and business. Everything. I mean, it's not a cute term. When we say it's a roadmap, it is literally a roadmap on how to make decisions. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this. My name is Pi. I'm Dr. Glenn. Welcome to the 12 Week Relationships Podcast. This is your guys' place for better relationships in weeks, not years. And when we say relationships, we mean all of them, starting with yourself, working on outward. Today, we're specifically talking about how your own core values are affecting the relationships that you have around you. And just a bit of a preface, this is kind of part four in our series on kind of getting to know exactly what it is that we do. So if you're thinking about coaching, whether it's personal or couples coaching, uh, this is for you. So let's yeah. get into it. You want to tell them a, a bit about the process. So what is CVFT? Just to do a brief overview in case this is the first episode they're listening to. It is the be all end all. The be all That's end all. No, and they don't even know what the acronym means. <laughs> so uh, CVFT is core value focused therapy. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we get to the core values of what drives your life and what makes your life important. And we use that as a roadmap to try to figure out helping you to make the best decisions in your life, regardless of whether it's career, intimate relationships, friendships, uh, whatever field that you're in, we're going to align, you're, we're going to figure out your values and then use that to, you know, for you to make all the decisions that you need to make. I like the way you put that. I just put you on the spot right now, but that was... I felt, awesome. I felt like I was on the spot, man. Yeah, you nailed it. Thanks, you know. man. I appreciate it. Oh, you that. felt like you were on the spot. Okay. A little bit. But, no, it's cool, <laughs> man. Like, I'm cool now. So, thanks. Well, the, the whole thing is is that when you kind of go to any coaching, any counseling, traditional therapy, the, the approach to understanding a person's values first is not there. And so what we did was based on research, based on hundreds, probably it's going to be cl soon close to thousands of case studies. Uh, we came up with this process of core value focused therapy because it's not being done. You generally go to therapy and they begin talking about symptomatic response, like what is going on? Tell us what's going on. Here's some drugs. Here's some techniques. Here's this. But we don't get to the underlying values. And even when we go to, like, say, coaching services, we start describing what's going wrong, but we're not getting to where we want to go or why those things are going wrong. Yeah, I mean, I think a really good distinction is like, you know, even seeing clients right now, uh, one of the individuals was like, this is, you know, when we're, they were doing the core value focus process, they're like, this is undone seven years of therapy that I've done. Yeah. Because it was not like the superficial, let's talk this out and let's kind of reframe all of your superficial thoughts. It got to the core and literally it just shook that person. Like <laughs> literally it was like, you have undone seven years of therapy. Well, we, in a good way. In a, in, in a, a good way. In a pod, <laughs> Sounds it, like. <laughs> bringing that, it brought it to light. Because, you know, we talked about this before, like the whole medical model concept is maintenance, not too much, not too little. Yeah. And then the goal is to not change too much, right? Like it's just trying to maintain and try to find this balance point of not too happy, not too sad. Where what we're saying is like, if you need to make changes, then that's what you need to do based on the values and your motivations in life. Well, you said something beautiful in there that I want to like hone in on. You said without talking about it you know the the general idea the general concept of everybody when they think of therapy when they think of you know psychotherapy down to couples therapy down to marital counseling down to whatever it might be you think of talking let's talk through it let's resolve this by discussing and let's get emotional and that's and this is the exact opposite we know from research that just sitting down and talking about something is the best way to actually make things worse. So what we're doing is saying, you know, we're not going to talk about, uh, we, we can talk about any major issues, but bar that, if it's not an emergency trauma, you know, kind of just something that we need to do triage on, then let's table it and let's go to the root causes. Let's go to the core values, make those adjustments, make the alignments. Then we'll get back to discussing what's actually happening. So it's, it's a very, different and, and it's almost you know your book is titled upside down which is kind of ironic because that book was about trauma triggered therapy mm -hmm. and this approach but in reality this entire process of cvft that we've developed 
is an upside down version of the traditional model. And so how many of our clients have come in and sat down? How many times now have you gone through one hour with somebody and them have said to you, uh, this is unlike anything I've ever done. And I've been in so many therapy sessions. 100%. Of yeah, of and, and the, the number is a hundred percent. And this is the crazy thing is like everyone that we're getting, they've been in therapy for a, a, you know at least a year or longer. Yeah. So when they come in, it's not like they're just blindly like, oh, okay, I, I've never experienced so this is my first time experiencing this. They have something to compare it to, and they're like, oh my god, this is completely different. Like you know, they'll always say it's a very deliberate service. Number one, right? And the other thing that that comes up, this most common point is they're like, man, because, you know, they'll have like deeply, they have deep things that they really need to address. Yeah. And then the answer is like, let's try to act normal about it. But that's not the answer, right? Mm -hmm. You have to actually get to the core root issues and you got to go there. Whether instead of trying to act normal, like you can be abnormal or whatever that means, but you need to address it. Yeah. And that's what we do. Yeah. So, so all of these people are coming through. And they're having this experience, which is an amazing thing. So core value focused therapy is essentially therapizing once core values are essentially understood and laid out. And for those that maybe are new to the podcast, a core value is someone's underlying why, the reason why they might do a particular thing. And there's not that many of them. Most of us have three to five of these things that are driving us. And there's only a list of about 10 to 20 of them. People can respond in a million different ways. There are so many different ways. If I say, what are your values? They might say something like, oh, well, I like going to church or I enjoy reading or it's important to me to be, you know, I'm very, uh, I have a strong work ethic, whatever it might be. But there's an underlying core value that's driving each of these. And there's not that many of those. So let's say, for example, someone goes, it's really important to me to read what might be the underlying value to that? Uh, that could be personal growth, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're reading psychology books or self-help books because underneath the why is personal growth and development. And that personal growth and development could be their same reason for going to church. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It could be the same reason that they, you they know, do a, a whole host of things. What, what might be some other things that are driven by that one core value? the friendships that they choose, the hobbies that they have, their interests, Mm -hmm. um, even just like having pleasure and fun. If that is, you know, if it's not based on some type of growth, they probably won't enjoy it. Totally. Yeah. And they might, what we tend to do is we kind of, we tend to not understand why we're doing a particular thing because we don't ask these questions, right? So we go to church and we think that we're spiritual and maybe some people are, maybe some people are driven by an actual drive to be more spiritual and 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 there are plenty of those but for every one of those there's nine others that are going and doing that thing for a different reason and and i know many people that go to church for personal growth because they want to grow and they want to develop but they would say openly that i'm spiritual that's not the case you're spiritual because you want to personally grow yes i mean spirituality or the the location is the box Right. Like even if you go to happy hour and then some people enjoy that because maybe their core value is enjoyment and pleasure. Mm -hmm. But then a person that's like, oh, I want to connect with people, but they they only believe that this is the way of connecting. It's not going to work for them because maybe personal development growth, it doesn't match having drinks. Maybe it's doing yoga Mm -hmm. or taking, you know, being, you know, joining a class of runners or whatever the case may be. But until you get until you like break the facade you're not going to know exactly what you what you want and what you can do to be happier. Okay, so let's hold on to this personal growth. So if this is the core value, all of us will have underlying experiences that are driving, that are basically, that have created these values, right? What might be some of these different past experiences that have made somebody value personal growth? I mean, on, on a positive side, you know, you could have good role models as parents and you've seen them you know, like they value personal development and their role models to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe growing up, you had a passion in your life, like let's say basketball, and then you really worked really hard at it and you maximized your potential growing up. That's a positive experience where you're learning personal development and growth. It could be a wound, mm-hmm. right? It could be like maybe you grew up in a very restrictive environment 
and personal development wasn't rewarded, but it was really dormant inside of you, but it wasn't allowed to be expressed. And then so through this discovery of like restrictions and working through your pain, you realize, man, I want this to be like the the number one value in my life. So it could be a lot of different reasons. Or even going along the lines of pain, right? Because you can you can gain a value through positive experiences just like you can through negative experiences. So if someone grows up thinking they're not so smart because that's what everybody around them believes, and then once they are able to overcome that, this would be my personal experience, right? Of developing this, I, I very much have personal growth as one of my values. And it was early rooted in this idea that I didn't think I was that smart. So I grab I gravitated towards this, this value because as I began to learn and become more confident, it was my way of kind of fighting back against this early trauma of thinking I wasn't good enough. And eventually a lot of times these core values might shift. Something else might drive them. Like today I'm no longer worried about not being good enough, but early on my growth was attached to trauma. So growth can be attached to trauma just like, or, or a core value can be attached to trauma just like it can be to a positive experience. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we talked about this in a previous podcast, but it's your core value that gets you through. It's That's what creates the resilience, right? So like for you, you were told that you were not smart and then you were trying to box yourself and trying to fit in, but ultimately it was your intelligence that got you through. Sure. Right, like even for me, like in, when I grew up there, like independence wasn't rewarded but ultimately the resiliency came from the independence inside of me. That's what eventually got me through. Yeah. So now carrying this core value out to relationships. See, in any environment that a person goes to, you're going to create relationships with people that are, well, let's talk friendships first, right? You're gonna look for friendships with people that are relatable, that share similar values, or at least that we perceive to share similar values. So, Going along with that church example, because we've talked about that a lot, right? Going into a place like church, if you have a core value centered around personal growth, you're probably not going to create a lot of friendships with the people that are, you know, in the hallways talking and gossiping. You're probably not going to create friendships with those that you see just on their phone and texting each other. But what you might do is, is recognize that, hey, there's a person that's listening and actually taking notes. And that's interesting. Maybe I'll strike up a conversation with them. And so in these different areas, we look for these visible actions subconsciously and think, hey, I might be in line with the way that they think, and I'll create a friendship around that. So this would carry over to anything else, right? Like, like for example, jujitsu or, or, you know, you're at school. How many people go to school? You're a professor. How many people are there just to get a grade versus to actually grow? No, it's so true. Like, for example, like whether in the church or whether at the school, on the outside, on a very superficial level, you can say, oh, the core values, everyone, like everyone's in the psychology or social work field because they want to help people. It's a very general blanket statement. But eventually, like the groups that they, they go off into these subgroups mm -hmm. based on the similar values, like this group wants to just get by. This group is really driven. This group, they're not really sure what they want, but they're just kind of like the in-between BC student, right? So every, all the values eventually come out yeah. over time. And you see that in the formation of these, these cliques, right? Yeah. The cliques and, you know, even like spirituality, like, you know, for example, like you said, like on a blanket level, it looks like, man, everyone has the same value, but when you break it down to its core, it's different. And then when you look at the subgroups, then, you know, yeah. So holding on to personal growth as our example, when you create a friendship, shared values are going to bring this sense of relatability, not only relatability, but it's going to increase your reward. It's going to make you desire the relationship even more. And we talk about this within the entire framework, right? But the way that it might manifest is let's say two people, two friends that value personal growth. One is trying difficult things all the time. Maybe it's from a, and I can actually think of several archetypes along this. And, and because once you get down to this level, this kind of a framework can start to spell out patterns everywhere. So you can see them very easily. It's, it's like looking into the matrix. It's like the it code. It is the matrix. Are you seeing it? You're, you're seeing the it's code. The red pill. You can, it means something now instead of just numbers. Yeah. So yeah. one of the things that, because personal growth is one of my values, right? It's also one of Justin's values. But for him, he manifests it in a 
different way. His personal growth is very much aligned to an athlete, athletic performance, endurance, what the mind can do, its mindset, right? Mine is probably a bit of that, but it's also far more like like intellect, studying, reading, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when we're together, so much of our relationship is so much of the reward and the reciprocation, the relatability is sharing these ideas. It's what have you learned in this area? Here's what I'm learning in this area. And we sit here and go back and forth and basically feed each other. We're feeding each other's core value, that personal growth. But you bring up a really good point with that because even in a similar core value, there can be a, a subsystem in that too, right? Like in that example, you and Justin, you guys get along when it's talking about external achievements, right? Mm -hmm. Or success in that way but for you that's important too but even more than that it's more of an intrinsic thing for you mm -hmm. right and then so that's where it kind of gets cut off sure there's different ways of it manifesting right yeah. we all have a different there's there, different degrees different degrees and there's also the underlying experiences that his his experiences being younger and being in athletics and sports have made that a primary outlet for this or not a primary, but one of the main outlets for that growth, right? Yeah. And one of the areas that he would seek. And so, yeah, each of these, we, we have these, but when you look at it, the, the relationship is built around this fundamental core value. Now, I have other examples of friendships who people I was super close to when we were younger, but we don't share, let's say that we don't share this value of personal growth. I can name a number of them. And this is probably one of my top core value drivers. This is one of the big things for me, right? So as we got older in our 20s, early 30s, I just felt a natural distancing in those relationships. And this is what you're going to feel. You're going to feel this natural, like, we just don't have that much to talk about. Um, we, you know, I guess I've changed or they've changed or we're not the same people that we were. We use all these common explanations, but in reality, what's happening, and we might even say it's distance, but it's not distance. What's happening is that they don't share that core value. So when I talk to them, there's not necessarily anything interesting or relatable, or there's no reward in that conversation and in that relationship. Yeah, and it's not a blaming or it's not a fault. It's just, like you said, core values change over time. Like I, I have a, a very close, like a best friend of mine, like we grew up from high school. And then when we were in our 20s and then we were trying to go to school and we we're applying and we we're working toward a goal, right? Mm -hmm. We hung out a lot. Like we talked a lot. We did a lot of things together. And then we met up, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago. And we're like, how come we don't see each other that much anymore? So we're just chit-chatting about it. But then eventually like, for him, like, you know, he became like a dentist, a periodontist. And he was like, man, for me, it's all about respect and status and pleasure and enjoyment. So he just loves to like just go to work. And then he's like with his family. And then he just loves doing like pleasurable things, lots of vacations, lots of those things. Whereas for me, like I enjoy those things too, but it's still about the growth and development. It's about the internal process and understanding myself and being able to be of service in these different ways. And that's where it's split. Yeah. Right. And that's where it's like, yeah, this is where we don't have a lot to talk about anymore other than if we reminisce or if we're just like checking in on people that we know or how's your family. But outside of that, it just becomes like a, you know, like it, there's no connection outside of that. Yeah, I think we should hold on to that core value of personal growth and carry that through the romantic and the, the business side as well. But let's maybe do something, let's add to it. Let's make something that's a little more emotional, right? So what about a core value? One of the common ones, again, one of these, you know, 10 to 20 or so core values that comes up repeatedly is connection, a sense of intimacy, closeness, right? This can be on, on any person's side. Sex doesn't matter. It's, it's someone's gender doesn't matter. It's just some of us have this need for close connection in, in friendship. If that is a core value driver for you, you're going to look for the people who are highly authentic and willing to be open and transparent and honest. And you're probably going to be repulsed by anybody that is, well, showing, I guess, what is it? Their Instagram lives constantly. They're kind of, they've got that facade, you know, they've got that. You can't really get in and you're not going to really connect because that's the exact opposite of that. Yeah. So if you're seeking connectedness, if, if that is a core value driver, 
Yes. Then again, the friendships that you create, they need to have that. No, I agree. So like I'm having like flashbacks. So like there's another person that I met and then basically, um, yeah, like it's been a while. And then instead of like, yeah, I was like, Hey, I really want to connect with you. I really want to connect with you. And then they kept going like, do you know how much money I make now? Do you know the raise that I got now? Yeah. Do you know how, do you know how expensive this is? You know, I bought like, and I was just like, okay, great. But what's going on with your life, man? Yeah. And then there would just be a pause. Like, how are you doing? And it would just be this pause and then they just go back in their head and just keep like going off. So eventually it was just like, okay, that's cool, man. Yeah. Just, just do what you got to do. Yeah. I, I, I know exactly those cases and I've personally experienced similar things myself because I, I would again say connectedness is one of the pieces that I have too, one of the values that I have. But can I ask you a question? Like mm -hmm. without knowing core values or without like having this framework before I'd be like, oh my God, why, why am I losing the ability to connect with this person? Absolutely. What, what am I doing? There must be something wrong with me. Or maybe, you know, maybe I've lost touch or something like that. I start questioning myself versus like the matrix, the red pill. We're just, we're just not aligned right now. Like yeah. this, there's just no alignment. It's no fault to anybody. It's fine. Well, that was the exact question. I mean, I went about writing this framework and developing and doing the research for it because I had that exact question. Why is it that I'm close to some people? and I've let other relationships go. Why is it that other people do the same thing? Why do we keep falling back on these weird cliche, you know, pieces of advice and things that just are not true? And in one particular case, I was thinking of almost the exact same thing with a friend who I used to be close to when I was younger. And we were, we were long distance basically throughout college and, and whatnot, but I had other long distance friendships that were easy to maintain. And I, I kept trying to figure these things out until eventually I was like, okay, I, I, I bet there's a reason and there's some sort of framework that can be applied. And yes, once you have it, then you're, you, you go, okay, now I understand. Now, now I know why that was the case. But he was another example of that exact thing that you just said. Every time you try to connect and have a good conversation, it goes to these very surface level. Yeah, man. So remember the times when we were like skiing and stuff and you're like, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> That was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. So how are you doing today? Good, dude. I'm just working. What do you do? You know, just stuff. Tell me about it. Um, no, no, no. Like, have you talked to like Trent and stuff like way yeah, back? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to you right now, dude. <laughs> you know, like that's kind of the way that it goes with, with each of these conversations. And the only commonality is the history. Yeah, no, I agree. And then if you try to like keep pushing it, like, dude, why are you being a downer, man? Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, man. Cool, man. Like, yeah, like, trend's good, man. <laughs> so last week, man. So. Okay. So let's carry these core values now into a different context, right? So we have, we're only talking about two of these potential values. Yeah. We're talking about personal growth and we're talking about connectedness. Let's carry it into romance. Okay. Yeah, I mean, romance, if you do not have similar core values, it's going to be really hard to connect. And we talked about regard, right? Respect and attraction that you have towards your partner. If you don't have similar values that are aligned, it's going to be really hard to maintain that attraction and desire to be with that person. Yeah. Right? Like if personal growth is huge for you, and then on the opposite side, the other person just wants pleasure and enjoyment, you guys are going to butt heads all the time. Yes. And the way that it shows up, and, and we talked about, well, if you guys have been longtime listeners, you know, kind of pieces of this framework, like, for example, regard the way that you look upon somebody that is directly affected by your core values. Right. So when your core values are in alignment, you have respect and admiration and and you look highly upon someone. You have regard for them. When your core values are out of alignment, you lose that regard. And regard is the centerpiece of wanting a relationship. If you, you don't want relationships with people that you don't like or respect or admire and you can be married to someone that you don't like respect or admire very easily the way that it comes forward and the way that it looks practically is going back to that personal growth thing right well you said that they value enjoyment so what ends up happening is one person spends a lot of time reading studying pursuing yoga meditation and the other one happy well, hour happy hour maybe their primary driver is connectedness right social connection 
So they're hanging out with their friends. They're always having drinks. They're always at happy hour. Booze cruise. And the one person can't understand the other person. I don't. Why do you spend all your time reading? Why do you spend all your, you must want to work more than you want to hang out with me. That's what the connectedness person is thinking, right? You must want to do these things much more. You love, you know, work and everything else more than you do me. And the other person's like, I just don't understand why you're so lazy. Why yeah. aren't you, why aren't you treating, you know, your time more valuably? Like, why aren't you doing something else? Yeah. And the crazy, this is actually a couple, this is actually a common thing that happens a lot. Um, in the couple's coaching sessions. And then this is a very common archetype. This is a very, yeah, exactly. Like this isn't just one couple. This is like several. Yeah. And basically it comes down to like, you know, the person that has personal growth, they'll be like, actually being of service makes me relax and it's enjoyable. Just like when you're out with your friends having a drink. Yeah. And then that, that, that it's like a mind blowing thing to them. Like, really? That that's, you really enjoy it that much. And it's like, yeah, they really do. Yeah. Right. So that level of understanding, you couldn't understand it unless you understood the core value of the person. Yeah. I had a similar conversation actually with Yen last night where, you know, I, I, I kind of get home and I often turn on the TV because this goes back to like my childhood. TV's kind of always been the comfort. You know, I grew up as an only child. And so I'm not watching a lot of TV, but I'll turn it on for background noise. And then I'll sit there and I'll, and it's weird because I'll, I'll turn on the TV, put my headphones on and write or you know work on whatever i want to work on do some reading or and a lot of times i'll actually put on the fireplace if you go to my netflix account the fireplace you know the fireplace yes. birchwood 4k edition ultra <laughs> hd that is the most played movie <laughs> on my netflix account by a long shot like i probably have like a thousand plays on it every time i come up it's like continue watching fireplace but I, I like that. I like the the sound and the ambiance and, and and when I'm watching a show, I'm always working or doing something in the house, you know. But for Yen, she doesn't like watching TV that much. And because I have it on, sometimes she feels like she has to sit down and watch it because it's like, well, I, I do want to spend time with you. And I go, you got to understand, that's not my way of spending time with you. And I'm not, I'm not even watching it. I'm doing that because it has background noise. And what am I doing, honey, when I'm watching TV? She goes, oh, you're, you're usually cooking or cleaning or, or writing or you have your headphones on. I go, yeah, it's, it's just filler. So you don't ever have to feel like you need to sit down and watch with me, you know? And so it, it comes back to, again, for some people, turning on the TV and putting on their headphones, it's insanity. Like, why would you do that? And sitting down and writing when you could be relaxing and having a drink and watching TV, that sounds horrible. But for me, that's enjoyable. That That is how I unwind. But the crazy thing is like, on a superficial level without knowing core values, that could have become a fight. It could. Right? It could. Like you're you're tuning me out. All you the do is watch the TV. The TV's on and why aren't you paying attention to me? And I'm putting effort trying to be with you right yeah, now. Yeah. That could be a fight if you didn't understand core values. Without understanding the why behind what we're doing very easily. Yeah, and it's just this constant misunderstanding that takes place because people view things in a, just a very like simplistic external point of view versus going deeper. Correct. Yeah, Correct. and that's when we go to that deep place so that you can, everything starts to open up. Yeah. The matrix is revealed. It is. It is fully, the, the relationship matrix. The relationship matrix. We're trying matrix. to figure out all the other pieces. Those. Bringing Trinity and Neo together, together again. I gotta say I left number four. It was nice. I, I like, you know, I like, you know, seeing what happened with them, you know, but everybody anyway. thought it was a money grab, but it was, it probably was. I mean, it was a money grab, but if you like the series, you're going to like it. If you, if you only like number one, then skip number four. <laughs> Cause it, I mean, if, if you look at it from that scale, if like number one was the best and all, if you only like number one, we're, we're getting deep into the matrix right now. Maybe we should get back to this. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, misalignments in core values they they come about in those ways or like in marriage you just don't understand why the other person is doing what they're doing why are you going back to exactly what you said yen would probably say why do you always watch tv yeah or like you're you're not this is how much you have like no interest in me whatsoever yeah yeah how could you do that yeah you're so thoughtless versus 
this is how I work. Yeah. This is what's important to me. And this is where I feel relaxed. Like yeah. I, when I'm actually, if you put me on a beach and I'm with a Mai Tai in my hand and no book to read and you just said, just veg and have a good time, I would be miserable. <laughs> you give me a book and give me the Mai Tai and I'm, I'm good, right? But you have to understand how these values tie into these activities because you can't plan quality time with one another without knowing what you're both looking for. No, agreed. And then, you know, once you understand core values, like that's like an individual core value where sometimes like you have to do that, like work, you have to do it on your own, mm -hmm. right? Versus like shared personal growth time through intimacy. Like it's being able to define, even just within that core value, it's defining the time within yourself and then the relationships that you have to make it work. For sure. So another way that you can make these things align within your ro romantic relationship, right? is uh, I'm just going to draw on a few more examples from like case studies as well as personal studies, uh, personal examples. But one of those is Yen very much has a need for adventure. She loves being out traveling, which we haven't gotten a chance to do much of uh, since our baby was born. I thought you can say the coronavirus, Omicron, all that too. That too. Yeah. Well, that all happened the same year. So baby plus virus. Interesting times. Um, but... <laughs> One of the things is I, I do love adventure and travel, but I also have this need to be growing. Now, adventure and travel kind of fits that need as well. Like being able to explore and see those areas does fit that. But I can only do so much of it until I feel that itch again. I need something else to be growing. And Yen knows this. So we bring along audiobooks. I go and while we're somewhere, I will take pictures. If I see something cool, I might film a little tutorial. We take these, this one of her core values of adventure and, and kind of just traveling and, and all these things that fit underneath that, right? And then we blend the two together. I have a need for growth and where I can't grow in actually traveling and doing that thing while we're driving, I'm gonna listen to a book. We're gonna chat about that book when we get there. I'm going to enjoy. And when I'm not enjoying anymore, I might film a tutorial. And it's allowing each other to kind of live in these spaces where we're doing things together and we're sharing together, but we're also doing it based on one another's values. And you guys are balancing each other's values, even in that example of vacation, right? Like even me and my wife, it, it sounds similar. Like she loves fun and adventure. She loves pleasure and enjoyment. So when we take trips, it's understanding that for me, personal development and growth, I wanna learn about a culture. Mm -hmm. I wanna get immersed. I wanna have time to explore and to just really understand like that really excites me, right? Yeah. And then so we're kind of blending her fun and adventure with personal development. And then once I get that fill, the downtime of just kind of like eating and just being together and just kind of relaxing, like I could be in that space to really do that. For sure. Right, so even just on a vacation, Blending core values can make that vacation experience so much better. And along the exact same lines, when it's not working, right? When your core values are not in alignment, you can take the exact same thing, a vacation. And I'm going to give you an example, one with my ex. We were traveling through China, actually, and uh, I had a wonderful relationship with my ex's mother. Like, we were really close. And her mother said, I want to take you to this place, this village. And that, and that was honestly the only relationship that I mourned in the entire divorce process. Um, but we went to this village in China. It was up in the mountains. It was incredible. And we walk into the place after parking. We kind of walk in and you're just surrounded by these mountains and green. And it's so incredibly picturesque. It's like what you'd see in movies. Like you'd see this kind of landscaping in like Avatar. And, and there's bridges that are going across places like rope bridges and whatnot. And I'm just in awe and I'm, you know, asking mother-in-law all these different questions and, and we're, we're communicating in Chinese. So it wasn't a case of my ex not understanding or whatever, but each time that I looked at the person that I was married to at the time, she was in a different headspace. Every time I looked and I was in awe and I would glance back, she wasn't there. She was thinking about all the other fun things that she wanted to do, the friends that she wanted to hang out with. She was texting them, giving them phone calls. And I, I kept kind of falling back to, don't you see this? Like, there is no internet here. There's no nothing here. And look at how happy everyone is. And, and look at this life. And we ended up sitting under this giant tree at this 
family restaurant. It's like a family restaurant in the middle of the town where the, the family's house is right there and the tables are right underneath their own tree and their home and kitchen, everything right there. And they're bringing food out directly from the farm. Like you can literally see the farmers bringing food into the that kitchen and, amazing. and bringing it on the table. And nowhere in that experience was my ex-wife present. She was present doing something else. She was physically there. Physically there. But her mind was in a different place because that wasn't her enjoyment. It, it wasn't about growing and about learning and about doing all those things. It was, I would say that her driving piece was more so that social connectedness with her friends, with other people. But she, she also had the opportunity to connect there, but she chose not to. Correct. But that's what it feels like when you're, when you're so out of alignment, Yeah, you're both in the same place, but you're experiencing two completely different versions of that reality yeah which is crazy right and then if you didn't know your core values even just on that vacation how do you resolve that you don't yeah you, there, there's nothing to even talk about right you could this was like seven or eight years ago and for a time those things used to matter and we would fight about it why can't you be here right now why can't you it just be the circular thing the hamster wheel of fights and then you just stop at a certain point, it's just not worth talking about anymore. And then at that point, it's just silence. Yeah, versus like, oh, our core values definitely do not match. Yeah. That's it. Once again, carrying this out to business, exact same thing. The business partner that you go into business with needs to share these values. Whatever your values are, that person needs to be operating. They don't have to be driven for the exact same reasons. They don't have to, they don't have to have had your experiences. They don't even have to manifest those values in the same way. Going back to that example of Justin, right? We both have this personal growth, but we both show it in different ways. But they need to be driven by the same values. I agree. Like even before working with you, because we're re we're really big on personal development and growth. Um, I worked with you know the psychiatr the psychiatrist I was working with before. His main thing was always being safe. Like even like when I was learning the business. Um, you know, in this kind of traditional field, he'd be like, always choose safety over money. Or like, even if you have the potential to make a lot of money, he was like, always be safe. That's so interesting. And then, so that's why we'd, you know, eventually just kind of butt heads because I'd be in the safe space and then it'd be like, okay, well, let's grow this out. Like, let's try to build this further. And he's like, no, 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 no. We got to keep it safe. Was that the one that told you to change what your expectations on what you were going to accomplish yeah well I, no that was a different guy so a that, different guy but these are all this two psychiatrists that are in that medical model mentality but yeah he had the same mentality which is just stay safe and don't do it interesting let's let's tone this down you're you're being too crazy yeah yeah so you know our alignment our core values were not aligned at all in, in terms of that yeah unless i basically said okay let's just stay in this safe space and try to make it work and eventually like i tried to balance it between safety and personal growth but eventually it doesn't work out because personal growth sometimes it does take risk mm -hmm. right it, it does take like going out of your comfort zone so once that was happening the safety component or the perceived emotional safety component is gone yeah yeah the the only interesting aspect of the business partnership is that in addition to the other you know in, in a business partnership you have two potential relationships you have the business relationship and you have the personal relationship right on the business relationship standpoint, you really need core values between your business partner to be in alignment with the business's goals. That's the, the values for the partnership, for the business partnership is the business's goals. When their personal values override those goals, for example, in a business partnership, if one person says, well, I know we need our company to do well, but I'm, I just, you know, I like taking trips with my family and I'm going to go on as many of these as I want. Because this is, this is what's most important to me. This happens all the time. People will choose anything outside of the business over the business itself. And relationships crumble. The business partnership crumbles because one person is trying to operate and do what's best for the business. And the other person is not operating on those same set of values. So that relationship falls apart. And then on the other side, you have business partnerships where both people can value the business and and they the goals of the business are their own values when it comes to the partnership 
but then their personal values are different. And so they're not going to remain super close personally as friends, but they do make for great business partners. Because on a business standpoint, the core values align. Yeah. As long as the, as long as the goals of the business falls into their core values as business partners, the partnership is going to work. They don't have to be best friends. Yeah. And then the previous example you gave, the person that chooses family and the, the vacations, they're valuing family over business. Like there's a cutoff point in terms of what they're willing to do mm -hmm. to grow the business. Mm -hmm. And that's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. Because like, okay, cool. Like this is the point where you're at. Like I'm going to have to go in a different direction. Yeah. And this is where the, the business agreement is so critical, right? Because what's laid out in terms of expectations and values should be, should be placed in that agreement. And you can very quickly see if the other person is going to hold up to those, to those things, you know, the amount of time that they're going to work, what they're going to put into the business, all the things that they would put into that. What's crazy about marriage is that in every way, shape and form, a marriage gone wrong would have more impact on your relationship, on your finances, on your business, on your family, on your children, everything. And yet we can enter into them so easily without a contract or without anything in place. But that's, that's a separate topic, but <laughs> it's, it's wild to me that we'll sit there and think about a, a business partnership more than you would. You carefully plan it out, but when it comes to love and intimacy, it's just like, let's just do it. Yeah. Cool, man. Let's go to the courthouse right now. Well, and the law's not going to generally get involved with the dissolve of, of a business, you know, like unless there's legal and, and other like debt type of issues that need to be resolved. Most businesses, they just end. Let's just rewrite the law and make it that you have to know your core values and this agreement signed I before marriage. Could. Yeah. Let's do that, man. In a marriage standpoint, there's no guidance going into it, but there's a whole heck of a lot of legal involvement afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah, it gets crazy. All right. So that said now, I think we've covered and done a good job of kind of explaining how these core values practically affect our relationships and, and, and that we create. So the question now is which ones do you keep and where do you set boundaries essentially when those core values are not in alignment? Well, I think, you know, if you have friendships that are aligned with your core values of like personal growth or connection, right? Relationships that are aligned, they feel good, right? They're energizing. Like you, you, you're more motivated to be with those people and you feel good about yourself after hanging out with them um, versus people that they're not aligned, borderline toxic. Like it's just, it's just not a healthy relationship with them anymore. You're going to be really fatigued and tired. Mm -hmm. You're going to be anxious all the time. You're going to be resentful. You're going to be replaying the event. Why did I even hang out today? It's such a waste of a day, right? Mm -hmm. So going through that cycle where energy is taken away, those are the relationships to cut off. Mm -hmm. And then I think boundary setting uh, like you mentioned, like if you have personal, I mean, relationships or professional relationships, but you need to get the job done. It's really understanding like, okay, maybe we can't be friends, but we can still be good business partners. Mm -hmm. And that's where the boundaries are set. Yeah. For me, it's, if we speak strictly personally, I'm going to give you a, a general rule. I always want to say rule of thumb, but then I read where that phrase came from. And it's kind of disturbing. Where does it come from? I think it's like a very, oh, well, well. Okay, anyways, I need, all right, I need right. to look it up, but it was something right. very violent. Oh, is it? I think it was, but I have to, I have to study it more. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It's kind of like that whole in like Flynn thing, right? Cause that's, <laughs> that's a disturbing thing yeah. where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll just say a general rule. Um, tell me what you think about this general rule. You know, there's nothing wrong with casual friendships. You don't need every one of your relationships to be close. In fact, you can only have a few close relationships in your life. Most of them are going to be casual friendships, situational friendships, you know, other relationships that kind of just fill certain roles in your life. And usually in these more casual relationships, you might have something in alignment, maybe one value in alignment, maybe two, but it's not fully in alignment. I would say that the closer you want to be with someone, the more these values should be aligned. If it's a basketball friend, you know, just a church friend, work friend, someone you see on occasion, usually there's one thing in alignment. So what I would say is the less core values that are in alignment, the more you need significant boundaries and the more core values in alignment, then boundaries are still important, but the less of them that you need, you can allow them to have more space in your life. No, I agree with that. So, I mean, I feel the more core values you have, it's a sign that you need to cultivate those relationships more. 
and put more time and effort into them. The more core values and alignment, you mean? Yeah. The more the more you are aligned with your core values, the more you want to cultivate those relationships and put more time and effort into them. Yeah. And then on the flip side, like you were saying, the less core values, it's boundary setting or even for me personally, it's just like letting go. Yeah. If it's toxic. If it's if it's toxic, I think that's the only way. If it's if it's something that is and when we say toxic, this word is so overused these days. Toxic is a great word. It is the best word to describe, uh, you know, an actual toxic situation. But this is a situation or relationship that is drawing significantly more energy from you than it's providing. It's it's a constant drain. And it's not just occasional. It's constant. That is toxic. With something toxic, you just let it go. Oh, I agreed. And then I think the other point about relationships that don't have a lot of core value alignment is appreciating it for what it is, right? It's mm-hmm. this kind of superficial, this more distant relationship. But what's a core value that you do share? Maybe it's pleasure and enjoyment once in a while. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's, you know, activity based or whatever the case may be. That's fine. You don't have to put more into it than it is. Because I think that's where people get hurt. For like, sure. Oh, oh, we get along with this. But ultimately, your core values really don't match. But on the su- on the surface, it looks like it does. But it really doesn't. And then you invest in this relationship and you get really disappointed. Well, and that's where the boundaries come in play, right? Because the boundaries... Boundaries are there so that you can maintain a relationship. It's not there. It, you don't create a boundary to cut off somebody. You create a boundary so that you can create a, a a positive space where you both can interact, where you don't have too high of expectations for this person. So when you have less core values in alignment, let's say there's only one thing that you guys enjoy doing together. It's just a casual friend. Then you set a boundary so that there's not expectations of something more. You're not expecting, you know, this this buddy that you really just enjoy running with and biking with, but nothing else. Like you don't really have much in common beyond that one thing. Without boundaries, you would have these expectations that that's going to be, you know, the person that also does this. They're going to be the ones right. that come over and hang out with my kids. They're going to be the ones that, you know, I can talk to, but they're not that thing. Yeah, you're making assumptions based off of like one activity or, or like a shared core value of fitness. Yeah. Right. But they're like, oh, if they're into fitness like this, they must have personal growth as well. And you're making all these assumptions and you just get disappointed. Yeah. They're not like that at all. It's just fitness. So the less closely aligned our values, the more boundaries are required to limit expectations. You, you enjoy what there is to enjoy from that relationship. And the more core values are in alignment, well, then we need less boundaries. We can enjoy more and allow that person into our lives more but the other thing too is when you explore your own core values you're naturally setting boundaries because you're being more introspective you know what you need and then when you start examining the relationships in your life like you know exactly what to do Mm -hmm. and instead of like oh they're not this way or i'm so disappointed in them it's like oh my gosh i was making an assumptions about this person this is who they are this isn't in alignment with me i could set a boundary so it's just being more proactive with yourself being more accountable with yourself. And ultimately that's where the boundary setting comes in. Awesome. Well, I think we're done. All right, man. All right. You're setting a boundary on this podcast right now. Yeah. Right, right there. Done. (laughs) This is it. Not exactly how boundaries work. So (laughs) just kidding, but we hope y'all enjoyed the episode. Uh, well, look, if you did, we'd love for you to hop onto the iTunes store. You can actually go to 12 week relationships, the podcast and leave a review. They help us a ton. And uh, yeah, please leave a five-star review. If you have anything negative to say, direct message, Glenn. Yes, give it to me directly. It's fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. (laughs) Those of you that are looking for, well, more personal one-on-one type work, you can jump on to 12weekrelationships.com and join our wait list. We do have personal as well as couples coaching available. We are working on some online programs. They're going to be amazing as well. And uh, we'll let you guys know when those come. But in the meantime, you can hop onto Instagram or on TikTok, you can give us a follow and check out our shorts. And well, if you have any questions or topics you want us to cover, then go ahead and send us a message about that as well. That's it for now. Thank you so much. Peace.